I hope everyone enjoyed the other talks. Uh, some of them were, well, a big topic. So I hope to provide you with some more lightning stuff about JavaScript. So first, if you don't know me, I'm Raymond. I'm a tech mentor at uh, Code Pomoja. Um, well, maybe at the end, one of my colleagues will tell you a little bit more about Code Pomoja. We're doing awesome stuff. Some of the interns over here are also joining in us. So, um, um, yeah, and next to that, I'm a JavaScript lover. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about JavaScript and, for example, or for instance, the intersection observer. Who's familiar with the intersection observer? Yep. Okay, well, that's cool because uh, we're all going to learn uh, some new stuff today. Who is familiar with the uh, event listener and then the scroll? Okay, well, happy that there are a lot of those. Um, who likes it? Who likes to work with the scroll event? Not? Can I have the microphone? Yeah? I want to know why. Who wants to answer? Why? Why don't you love to work with the... Uh, louder. Uh, go ahead. Still okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, uh, you should uh, constantly uh, update your uh, window with every scroll you make. Well, uh, you make a lot of scrolls. Okay, so, so there are a lot of effects. That's, yeah, a lot of performance uh, okay. issues will become. Someone else, some difference? <laughs> we have to wait for the mic. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, there are too many differences between the browser, so it's really hard to do it good. Okay, yeah, yeah. Someone else, Bjorn? Yeah, I wanted to add to the amount of uh, events that are also blocking, so that's also a big pain, to be honest. Okay, well, I, I think I heard uh, enough. So, yeah, that's why my this slide, yeah, it's a warning. Yeah, watch out with using the scroll event. And why? Well, some of the people over here are already explained it. Wow, this design looks like a mess. But um, the scroll event, and specifically the, uh, M, uh, uh, the Mozilla Docs network says, since scroll events can fire at a high rate, well, I don't know who, but someone of you already told, the event, list, the event handler shouldn't execute uh, computedly expensive operations such, such as DOM uh, modifications. So at Mozilla, they already say, well, watch out to use this because if you're going to do DOM manipulation, it's going to be quite heavy. Well, I have a example. Hopefully this works. And some of you already told, there is, well, with a small amount of scrolling, well, you can see that over there with the scroll bar, this is the amount of um, events that is triggered only to scroll to the bottom. Well, this is not very heavy to add a class to um, a element, I can show you. JavaScript, so I created a scroll event on the window and I, well, keep in memory the counter for every event that is triggered and when the element is visible, I only set a class. So that's not quite heavy. Zoom in, yes. Uh, but that's not going to work. <laughs> I can, cause, can zoom in, but, well, wait, we can open it in, uh, uh, wait. 
we can uh, go to the edit. Hopefully, I can do it here. And go to the JavaScript. Is this better? Or more? Can every, anyone, everyone read this? Yes? OK. So over here, I'm, on, I'm doing the scroll event on the window object and keeping a counter and put that in the HTML. So like here. And of course, I want to check if a element is in the viewport. And over here, I grabbed some uh, quick code because I didn't have that much time to check if a element is visible on the page. Well, you can see quite some code, not that much, but I think it can be easier. So that's why we have the intersection observer. Uh, now I want to go to full screen over here. Well, show. Yes, I want full screen. So the in, um, yeah, just like I told you, uh, to check if a element is visible in the uh, window, uh, you need to make a manual cal calculation and you can use the element get bound client rect. Well, that's a long word and I think it can be easier with the uh, next one, with the intersection observer. Well, this uh, specific animated GIF, what someone is doing over there, you can do that with the intersection observer. Very easy. So the intersection observer API provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with an anchor star element. Well, a big a big explanation, but it is pretty easy. So I've created a, a simple example of how the uh, intersection observer works. Uh, keep in mind that from my head, Safari doesn't support this yet. So uh, if you want to make this work, you have to yeah, check it uh, in Safari with a polyfill. On NPM, you can check out uh, the polyfill of the intersection observer. So um, what we're doing here. Is this visible for everyone or should I open it here? Yes. So my HTML, yes a nice block of CSS, but that's not where it's about. Um, well, just a container and a fake image. And over here, the JavaScript. So you have a few options in the intersection observer. And right now, I'm only using two of those, but if you're checking the docs, you can find out a few more. So uh, the root margin is the margin that it's keeping in mind uh, on the whole screen. So like, for example, this one, 25 pixels, it's keeping that in mind that uh, if, it is then, if it goes in that root margin, it won't show as visible. And the threshold it's only that uh, we're now going to fire an event. Well, I call it event, but it's basically a callback, uh, of course, asynchronously. And then it will, uh, um, over here, go to in this 
uh, callback function and check if the element well is intersecting and it's checking if it is for 90% visible. Well, over here I have uh, a constant with all the uh, elements. Well, there's only one. But when I scroll, yeah, waiting. And only when it's for 90%, oh, wait, I have to. There was another example. I created multiple examples, so now it's loaded. And it started at 90%. So if I'm reloading and scroll a little bit slow, 50, 75, 90, and it's loaded. So I did no calculation on uh, if it is visible in my current window. I've only had to check, is it visible for 90%? And that's what I had to do. No manual calculation. So we can take this, of course, to the next level. How much time do I have? Uh, three minutes. Three minutes? OK. <laughs> I'm going to try it fast. But uh, there's going to be a link after the presentation, and then uh, you can all check it out. Um, I'm going to open it over here. So over here, I want to have a more, be more specific when the function is going to be executed. So I created a whole array from 0 to 1. And well, this code looks almost the same as the other one. Instead, when uh, the function goes in here, it's for 75% uh, visible. I'm not going to cancel the unobserved. So with unobserved, you can cancel the observation. So if I'm going to scroll. Sorry? Wow, thanks. <laughs> Sharp. But we change it. Reload. Now it's loaded. But when it goes out, it also fades in or fades out. And when it goes in, it fades in. So how did I do that? Well, it was pretty easy because I only set the uh, opacity of the styling uh, equally to the intersection ratio. So for now, I don't have to calculate it manually. I just use the ratio, intersection ratio and show if a element is in the page or not. These things are, well, I think it looks more easy than uh, the window.scroll event. I also have to do less calculations myself. So to summarize the pros and the cons, uh, the event listener of the scroll is firing much more events than the intersection observer, because the intersection observer just observes that element. Because if we go back, it adds a um, observer to every element because of this uh, for off loop. And then it will add the observation. Oh. Um, well, I think um, it's more lightweight. Well, the Mozilla Development uh, Network docs already told you that the window scroll is not uh, nice for the DOM manipulation actions. Um, well, 
and a lot of other points that you uh, will discover if you're going to play with it. Um, if you want to see a real world example, uh, you can check out my personal website um, where I did also write about the intersection of server. And over here, I use it, uh, well, here's the blog post. And over here, I use it to fade in this image. So asynchronously, this image is going to fade in and also um, start with a one by one pixel image. So if you want to check out, uh, it's also on GitHub. Find me on Raymond Schouwner. And then, uh, no, not that. There you can have a real world example. Well, since I don't have that much time, um, it's also performance wise pretty good. This one is for the scroll event, what I did in the testing, and this one is from the intersection observer. Well, I guess you can tell that over here there's happening a lot more than over there, but I didn't test it really, really in depth, so. I would say uh, thanks for your time and uh, hopefully you learn something. Maybe time for small questions or something? Of course. No questions? Yeah, I think uh, I can read it in the documentation, but uh, yeah, since no other questions. Uh, from the definition uh, you showed, I thought it's. Uh, about interse intersection between two elements, mm -hmm. which I can define customly, but it seems that we can define only target elements, and it it calculates intersection with what? With a window? Well, you can define uh, with what it calculates the intersection. Uh -huh. uh, if you go to the... Uh, but uh, here you have a default uh, setting and... Yeah, I've, uh -huh. uh, I did a uh, default setting on the window, uh -huh. uh, but you can um, intersection observer. And over here, I can show you an example that uh, Mozilla created. I'm going fast because I don't have that time. But over here, they created a, uh, well, uh, example if you scroll into that, you can also set that as a root element, what you want to check if it is intersecting, intersecting with that uh, element. So you can set the body, you can set a other element, container, whatever you want. So configurable. Okay, yes. thank you. Wow. No one else? Well, no? Then thank you, Raymond. Thank you.